Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1970 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today we are finishing up with the month of May and we will be looking at the standings, the league leaders, and then we will take a long look at the amateur draft uh, players list as the draft will take place on June 9th. So we're, what, eight days away from that, nine days away. Uh, from the draft and we'll take a look and see who's available. Uh, we have the 20th pick in the draft out of 24 teams and so we'll see who may or may not be available for us uh, when our draft pick comes around. So um, this may be a little bit longer of a video uh, but you know we're gonna take our time go through this uh, and hopefully you stick around and we'll see who the uh, pilots might be able to get in the first round. We need a lot of people as we wrap up the month of May, we did finish above 500, uh, which is a step in the right direction, I guess, after our 9 and 18 month of, G of April. So we went 15 and 13, a couple games above 500. You look at our Pythagorean, and we'll see that we're 24 and 31 um, based on our run differential, and that's exactly uh, where we are. So, I mean, we're playing right to the game's expectations. And, you know, as disappointing as this season has been and as frustrating um, as some of these games uh, play out, uh, when you think about, if you just take a moment and think about, you know, way, the way our lineup is, the ratings that we have, uh, especially compared to other teams, I mean, we really are a substandard team. If an 80 rating is league average, we have very few players who are above league average. Now, we have players like Bill Robinson, who's playing above uh, his normal level. But now this guy has completely died, right, as far as statistics. Um, if we look at Bill Robinson's log, okay, he's got two home runs in the last 20 games, and one of them will be dropping off uh, after the next game. So... Um, and two RBIs will be dropping off. So he has become an unproductive player for us as the game is very obviously front-loaded all of his stats. So how do we combat that? Do we just stop playing Bill Robinson? For who? For Jesus Alou, who's batting 138 since we signed him as a free agent, um, although he has really only been a pinch hitter for us um, with a couple of starts, uh, you know, uh, smattered in there but I mean there's really nothing we can do but live with the players we have we are clearly not the same team that we were last year uh, when we went to the playoffs so this is frustrating um, and this just is the way it's going to be uh, we can continue to build from within the draft we have done a okay job giving our team some depth in the minor leagues through trades uh, nobody that's going to, you know, make a difference one way or another. We still do have Lou Pinella, um, who we tried to make a thing, uh, but he got off to a terrible start. We could call him up. But who do we send down? If they have a check mark, that means they're on a major league deal, and we cannot send them to the minors. The only thing we could do would be uh, to release them or trade them, I guess. Uh, but who wants players that are you know, rated this low. Not very many. Every single player that we have is on the block. So, you know, they are technically available to be traded. Um, but we aren't getting a lot of offers. Um, now, one of the interesting things I want to point out here about our lineup is if you look down in, in single A, the catcher, Jim Sundberg, is 82 rated already. He is the highest rated offensive player on our team. He's only 19 years old. He wasn't even a major league player until 1974, as this is his um, 75 rookie card here. He's only 19 years old, and although in real life Jim Sundberg was a great defensive player, uh, he's got really nothing to offer us yet in that way. Um, so, I mean, what do we do? Do we call up Jim Sundberg from single A? Um, like, why not, really? I mean, Dave Parker isn't even that great of a player yet. Um, 
He's rated a 75. But that 75 is almost as good as anybody else uh, that's on our offense, right? He's, that would be equal to uh, Robinson, to Bill Robinson, whose position he would take. Now, Dave Parker had one of the best arms in the history of baseball, but he's not even rated an 80 in this game, so I, I don't know. Um, you know, we do have some players potentially for the future, but the future is not now. So that's a bummer as we take a look at our pitchers. Now, Bruce Brubaker and Ricky Clark are injured. We get them back in 7 and 10 days. Um, so they're on a AAA rehab right now. Getting them back will make things a little bit better for us. Um, when you look at our pitchers' ratings, it's the same old story. We just don't have anyone of quality. If you look at Dennis Leonard and Dick Ruthven, who are two starting pitchers that we drafted last year in June, uh, they're still too young to call up. I mean, again, they're 18, 19 years old. You know, after we do the draft this year, maybe we move Dennis Leonard and Dick Ruthven to double A, and then maybe next year we could call them up in September. But these are not, you know, you rush these players to the majors, they're not going to give you anything. Um, they're not going to, I mean, they could be better than what we already have, but, um, uh, you know, it's not, I mean, it's not likely. Okay, so um, that's just a quick uh, roster review. Um, you know, there's not much we can do. We don't have anyone we can trade except for the good young people, which we're not going to do. All right. So we'll take a look here at the standings. Um, Baltimore, uh, they are the best team in the American League. And they only have a one-game lead over the Yankees, who were on a huge streak before we uh, beat them uh, yesterday to break their eight-game winning streak. Boston, Washington, Detroit, and Cleveland, I mean, they're seven and a half to eight and a half games back for those four teams, but none of them are going to make a run, I think it's safe to say. Our division is a little bit more interesting because I kind of feel like anybody could win this division still, including us. I mean, <clears throat> like today's game, uh, earlier today, uh, we just were, we were out of it in the first inning, as most of the losses are. I mean, there was nothing I could do. And yet, we are only six and a half games back of Oakland. Um, I mean, I can't imagine Kansas City is going to be there. I can't imagine Minnesota is going to be there. Chicago's got the only other team that I think is decent. But, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's tough to say. So I, I'm not going to say we're out of it because we're only six and a half games back. But I just don't know how we're going to pass all these teams. I, Oakland should win the division. Now, it's weird looking at the National League. Um, St. Louis, yes, is on a four-game winning streak now, uh, but they fell a little bit and allowed Montreal last year's expansion team to take over first place briefly. So that's kind of exciting. Um, I mean, I do like seeing expansion teams making a run. And as we saw before in, in one of our other uh, videos, um, one of our regular uh, daily game videos, we looked at Montreal's pitching and we saw they have all young pitchers and they have a 322 ERA. I mean, that's, that's how they're getting it done. Uh, and then the Mets are right there. Um, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Chicago. You can pretty much count them out already. Um, in the West, last year's World Series winner, the Astros, are 35-18 and 18 on a three-game winning streak. And yet Los Angeles is only one and a half games back. Um, so one of those teams uh, is going to be, um, you know, left out in the cold at the end of the year. They are the two best teams in baseball. So um, San Francisco, San Diego are already done and have started to uh, make their players available to other teams. And when I try to poach players, you know, I'll go to a team like the Giants and say, like, who do they have that could actually help us? But... We, you know, you have to click on them <coughs> excuse me, and see, like, who might they trade. Um, they might trade Bobby Bonds. They might trade Dick Dietz. George Foster they won't trade. Willie McCovey they might. I mean, you get the picture. Um, 
most of these players, <clears throat> unless they're really young, are available. But how are we going to get them when their ratings are like 10 points higher than any player that we would consider getting rid of? I mean, for crying out loud, Willie Mays is not even an everyday player. Well, okay, he's 39 years old. Uh, that's fair. It just doesn't seem realistic. Um, I mean, they got Juan Marichal. They might trade him. That's amazing. I mean, we just couldn't get him. And he's super affordable. He's making less money than uh, Brabender. That just doesn't seem right. Okay, anyway. Um, so there's your standings for the uh, National League. Um, the West is gonna is down to two teams. Everybody else is just playing uh, for posterity and draft picks. Okay, we're going to take a look at the league leaders next. Um, and we'll do this relatively quickly uh, because we do want to spend some time on the uh, amateur draft. So, uh, batting average leaders, uh, we have nobody in the top 25, as you might expect. Jerry Devan in batting 293. But part of that is with the na from the National League, which is why he's not qualifying in the American League at that uh, batting average. So Hal King and a couple of uh, Cleveland Indians uh, leading the American League. That what there's still 14 batters batting over 300. Some good ones in there too, like uh, Rod Carew and Joe Torre, who won a batting title. Frank Robinson. Um, it's good to see a lot of Cleveland players in there. There's one, two, three. There's five Cleveland batters out of the other nine starters that are in the top 10, or in the top 25 anyway. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so this batting average. Um, I mean, we're gonna, we'll take a look at doubles. Yeah, none of, nobody in our team is, ever gets doubles unless they're a pitcher. Um, I don't. We won't look at fielding. I mean, I do want to. I do want to know that, but I'm not going to waste your time. Hits. Uh, Bill Robinson's on the list, at least down at the bottom, with 54. Joe Torrey's got 70. Billy Parker. I mean, it's the same, same group of people in hits as you'd find in batting average. That makes sense. Uh, home runs. You look at home runs, and you'll see that we got four players who qualify. I went back and looked because I think I mentioned it in the game earlier today that we hadn't had a home run in a while. Yeah, we haven't had a home run in a week. We have four players that are nine and above in home runs, and we haven't had a home run in a week. That's because these players are done for the most part. Like, the game front-loaded all of these home runs to these guys, and you may not see them hit another home run all year. And that's what sucks about this game. Uh, one of the 100,000 things that blows about Baseball Mogul is that these guys have done. Like, if we had spread this, you know, if we'd platooned them or spread them out, um, their plate appearances over a season, it may have been a consistent level of production, uh, meaning, you know, they bat 250 and hit 15 home runs. But now they've hit all the hits they're going to get, and they have no value anymore you know, for the season, and what can you do? I mean, in a way, it's kind of the fun thing about the game is that, you know, here's Bill Robinson, who's never had more than 342 at-bats in a season. He's already got career highs in some of his categories. You know, like, if we give him 500 at-bats, it'll be the first time in his career. Where does he end on that, you know? Does he get 25 home runs? He's not getting 25 home runs now. I can guarantee you that. He might not even get 25 walks. Yeah, it's, that's, it's interesting, theoretically, but also it's, it's just frustrating now that um, we know that he's pretty much done for the year. And I'm not just saying that. Like That's how the game operates. We know that. Outfield assists. <laughs> Let's see. Hey, Bill Robb, he's got three. Um, yeah, you can't run on that guy. He did commit an error earlier in today's game, which, which is another bunch of crap from this game. Um, let's take a look at the OPS. Uh, we got Mike Keegan, thanks to his walks. Bill Robb. I mean, all of these, all of the um, 
on base plus slugging on our team is all just falling off the table now. Like they're just stopping getting hit, stopping getting walks. Um, yeah, they'll come down to like 700. That'll be the highest on the team when this season's over, which is just, you know, a bunch of crap. Now we look at RBI. It's good to see that Bill Robinson kind of hanging in there. Um, at one point he had the lead, but it looks like Don Locke is kind of blown by him. I mean, Darren Johnson, he has 31 RBI. He had seven runners left on base in one game uh, in which we lost um, earlier this week to the Tigers. You know, our game just th does not allow us to get clutch hits. Meanwhile, every at-bat that our opponents get comes through with a hit or they're safe on an error or a pass ball happens or some bullshit. It's just frustrating, obviously. Uh, runners thrown out. Yeah, I kind of want to see. Holy cow, Dalrymple has more runners thrown out than Manny Sanguian. Well, who has the most starts at catcher? The Rimp. He's got 30 games started defensively. And Manny Sanguian only has 13. I mean, and neither one of them can hit. I don't know. I mean, I, I think we're just not going to get someone at um, catcher this year that's going to provide anything for us. Unless we go to Sunberg, right? What I mean, why not bring up the 19-year-old? It's not like Ken Griffey Jr. was at 19, right, when he got called up. And we are an expansion team. <clears throat> so, well, Thurman Munson, 44%. Nice. Uh, run scored. Tommy Agee. We don't have him leading off anymore. Maybe we should take him and put him back there. At least he was scoring runs when he wasn't striking out. Um, the, ol the only two batters in our lineup that have been listed as tired now through the first two months are Tommy Agee and Jerry Devanin. Um, so... Jerry Stevenson, six sacrifice bunts. Um, you know, so like we've been doing a good job managing uh, the health of our batters, but our pitchers just keep getting injured left and right. Stolen bases. Yeah, I mean, Tommy Agee's got 15. Jerry Devannon on a nice little run for us right now. He's got a little heater going. What is he? Yeah, he's 10 for 11. He's got 14 stolen bases overall between the Padres and our team. So, he's doing well. Mike Hegan, sneaky fast with seven. Uh, but not a lot of stolen bases right now. Um, that's, that's kind of a bummer. All right. Let's take a look at um, strikeouts from our hitters. Yeah, Tommy Agee with 42. That seems kind of light. Right? I mean, he feels like he strikes out every time he's up. Um, but Rick Monday, for a leadoff hitter, has 54. Mike Hegan, who walks a ton, looks like he's striking out a ton as well. Hell, we're not even playing him anymore, practically. Um, let's see here. Uh, triples? Why not? Look. Okay, the catcher for California's got four. That's great. Great job, game. As I like to say whenever I'm being sarcastic. Uh, walks. Mike Keegan has 30. I think if we played him more, he'd, he'd be further up, obviously. Gene Tennis has 45. I don't know. Okay. Um, all right, let's look at uh, pitcher stats here real quick for the American League, and then we'll move on to the draft. Um... Okay, ERA leaders, it's um, Mel Stottlemyre, 2.26, Catfish Hunter, Andy Messersmith, Fritz, Jim Nash, he crushes against us. Al Downing just pitched the game of his life. It, he's got a no-hitter, and he pitched so well against us, and he loses on a pass ball. Unfair, Dick Estelle destroying us. And it's nice to see Mean Gene among the leaders. Good job, I mean. Complete games. Catfish Hunter, Mel Stoudemire has five already. 
we don't have a complete game all year from any of our starting pitchers. Uh, games pitched. Skippy. Mad Cow. Both have 27. So does Eddie Watt for Baltimore. Heck, we um, signed Fred Gladding barely over a month ago, and he's in, among the league leaders. Ron Locke. Diego Segui, we just cut him. And what else we got here? Um, let's see. Home runs allowed. Yeah, it was Denny McLean. He's out for the year now. John Gelnar has given up nine in how many innings? Well, 43. I guess it's not the worst. Um, yeah, okay. What else we got here? Innings pitch. We're not going to be on that list. Mostly because, well, we don't let our player, our pitchers pitch much past the fifth inning. But everybody else is on a four-man rotation. We're on a five-man rotation just trying to survive. Um, what else we got here? Quality starts. I mean, I, I don't really think this is a good category, but... And there's four that have 11. How many total starts? So 11 out of 14 starts are quality starts for Al Downing. It's nice to see Mean Gene on there. He's got six out of 11. Nice. Okay. Uh, moving on. Let's see here. How about saves? You know, it's funny because Skip Lockwood has been terrible. We have not had any luck with anybody closing. Um, we had Mike Marshall, who we traded to California for Ricky Clark, who's third overall now and is the closer for California. So we give the job to Skippy, and he's been bad. And yet, he's still in the top ten in saves. So, I mean, it's 1970. Saves was not that big of a, a category yet. Um, and so maybe the game recognizes that. I don't know, but um, anyway, it's, there's that. Uh, shutouts. Dick Estell. <laughs> I think he's got two shutouts against us. I, I, could, I could be wrong. It feels right, though. Okay, and what are we looking at here? Um, strikeouts pitched. Dean Chance with 85. Jim Nash, Vita Blue. Danny McLean is toast. Al Downing, Andy Messersmith. I mean, these are these are the guys you'd expect to be there. Uh, yeah, and wins, and then we'll wrap this up and go right to the uh, draft. Okay, wins. Um, Greg Ballo of the White Sox. Come on. Uh, Mel Stottlemyre with eight, a handful with seven, and there's Mean Gene. Where would we be without Gene Brabender? I don't know. I mean, he's going to be asking for some good money. Let's see what he's asking for. I forgot. Four hundred and eighty thousand dollars up from one forty-five for two more seasons. <laughs> I mean, we could pay him. I mean, he's only twenty-eight years old, but man, it's hard to just justify that. But then, how can we let him go? We know what he offers us. Um, and his health is so low, you have to understand that he might get injured, as some of our pitchers have been. So I, don't, I really don't know what to do about that. Okay, so that's that's it for the American League. We're not even going to bother with the National League. I don't I don't think you guys. We'll we'll click on it, and there's your National League leaders. Um, Daryl Evans betting three sixty four. Love to see that. And. Wow, a National League batter has more home runs than an American League batter. Look at all these names. You got Baby Bull. You got Johnny Bench, Daryl Evans, Hank Aaron, Jim Ray, Ed Cranepool. I mean, I don't know about that. Dick Allen, Dick McAuliffe. So there's some real home run hitters. That's cool. Holy smokes. Orlando Cepeda has 65 RBI? In 49 ball games. Oh my gosh. There's your MVP so far. 
Um, you know what I was thinking about doing? No, you couldn't know, uh, but I'm going to tell you. Um, and that is like, do you ever watch on Fox, uh, First Things First, and like uh, Nick Wright, who I dislike, but I enjoy the banter on that show, uh, they, he does like this tears thing, like quarterback tears. And like Patrick Mahomes is on the top, right? And all the other quarterbacks like fall into place in like a pyramid style. I was thinking about doing like a pyramid of the best hitters in our sim. Um, you know, because I try to, I want to always like add one more fun thing to this uh, sim every time I make a new season. And I thought it might be kind of fun to have like a, like a tears where I, maybe I just post it um, on the page. You would, you know, maybe I could pull it, like I could add it as a graphic during a game or at the end of the month or something. Um, and just have like who I think the top 25 players are in the game, but in a pyramid with, you know, in theory it would be Orlando Cepeda, I guess, at the top, you know, and then like then there'd be two people and then three people and, you know, um, I don't know. I mean, it's it's fun when I see that on television. I don't know what extra effort that would take me to accomplish, but uh, but it would, I think it might be fun. I don't know. What do you think about that? Do you think that would be something uh, you might be interested in? If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you would be interested in that because why the hell are you watching this? <laughs> watching a league leader's video for a uh, fake baseball sim. Um, probably because you love this stuff as much as I do. Even though it's ridiculous as baseball mogul is. Okay, I'm going to shut my pie hole and move on to the amateur draft. Okay. <coughs> now I've already, pardon me for coughing. Now I've already um, added all the baseball cards for these players. And because, you know, a lot of these players aren't going to be in the majors in real life until five, four or five years later. Um, because as you can see here, they're all 18, 17 years old. Um, so a lot of their rookie cards, their first cards, aren't until, you know, the middle of the 70s. So um, so based on, you, you can do this two ways. I, I do this in one of two ways. You can rank them by their potential peak, or you can rank them by your scouting department's um, uh, ratings, like what your scouts think are the best players. So we're going to do it based on the scouting report. And this is the part that just cracks me up. This game has a player named Greg Haderman rated higher than anybody else. There's Greg Haderman, a starting pitcher for the Dodgers at some point in real life, because that is a fake uh, Greg Haderman baseball card, one that was created. I must have pulled that off of... Uh, the internet somewhere. But if you look at this guy, this is supposedly the potential number one pick. Oh, let's before we do this, here are the top 12 uh, picks. We are number 20 overall. So the Padres, an expansion team from last year, the worst team in baseball this year so far. Angels, the Red Sox, less Expos. Um, the Royals with cheese, the Fightins, the Tigers, the Pirates, Cubs, Reds, Braves, White Sox. Those are the 12 picks coming up. <coughs> now, the game um, allows you to do two different possibilities with the draft. And I may not have illustrated this before, so I'm just going to mention it really quick here. You can do, uh, there's like a toggle um, on uh, one of the uh, editors here. And you can have it set up so that the game will automatically draft a player to the team that it would have, the player would have ended up on. So Fred Lynn, of course, was a draft pick for the Red Sox. And so if the, first, the third pick in the draft is Boston, so the Padres would draft a player who was on the Padres, even if he was way down here, like, I don't know, say it was Warren Brewster. I know he was on the Phillies, but like hypothetically, um, just for argument's sake, uh, if he was drafted in real life by the Padres, the Padres would just choose Warren Brewster over Fred Lynn. 
um, the game will do that as, as often as possible and it, until there aren't any other Padres available each round, and then he might pick the best player available, the, the, the game might. I don't like that. I would rather have the Padres choose whatever player is best for the roster, and if they've allotted um, a lot of money to scouting, then the scouting department will make a right choice for them. If they aren't spending money on scouting, if the Padres or any other team um, doesn't uh, uh, um, proportion money toward that, then they'll pick some schlub, um, which is what we want them to do, because we want Fred Lynn to get to the 20th pick, which is not going to happen. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I have that toggled off, so that will not happen in our draft uh, for the um, uh, pilots or for any of the Tiger seasons. I, I don't have that. Okay, so um, back to the scouting here. So we've got Freddie Lynn. Um, with that uh, Hayer, Haterman guy as uh, the top pick. This is uh, Fred Lynn's little picture from the um, rookie card for outfielders from 1975. Of course, he was the rookie of the year at MVP in 1975, one of the few players to have ever, ever done that. Okay, so he's the, supposedly the best option. He's already defensively feasible um, in any position. Um, I have gone through and made sure that every player in this draft is drafted to the right position. So if Freddie Lynn was technically a third baseman, that he never played center field, I would have went through and made him a third baseman, whether or not he had a good rating there or not. Because I think it's bullshit when the game goes, oh yeah, he, was a, he played one game at catcher in the minor leagues, he's a catcher in the majors. Like That's, that's just so frustrating. Drives me crazy. Okay, I need to get help. Um, so, yeah, uh, so Freddie Lynn, best overall choice. I mean, almost right out of the gate as an 18-year-old, he probably would be right in our center field if we could get him. Uh, we probably won't, though. I mean, I'm sure we won't. Okay, then there's Greg Haderman, and we will do this quickly here in a moment, but we're, you know, top 20 guys is what we want to look at. Fastball, 93 miles an hour, rated an 81 already. He's got a slider that's an 87. He's got two pitches right out of the gate above league average. Uh, as an 18-year-old, I can't justify putting him into the rotation. But in the 70s, they did that all the time. His command is a 96. His control is a 57. That's bad. So, um, And Greg Haderman, we never heard of him before. The game thinks he's awesome. <clears throat> then there's Greg Deal. Looks like he was on the Yankees at one point. This is a minor league baseball card. He's got two pitches. Um, his endurance isn't very high, but I guess technically he's a starting pitcher. So consider him. Alan Ripley for the Boston Red Sox there. I think he was a rookie in like 79 or 78. So he's got a long way to go before he gets to the majors. 92 mile an hour fastball. Next guy up is uh, Kruko. So see him here on the Cubs. This is from his um, uh, four-player rookie card from 1977. And, uh, I mean, like, already he's like kind of a good player. He does not have a pitch above league average. But he was a solid pitcher during this era. Not, you know, elite. There's John Denny. He was a Cy Young Award winner for the Phils. Wow, he's got great endurance already. No pitches above league average yet. Joaquin Andahar, a pitcher who shone bright and then just blew up. Um, another pitcher who doesn't have a quality pitch yet. Peak of 92. I'd like to have him on the team. There's Dale Porter as a young man, 1972, before the drugs got to him. Great catcher. I mean, come on. This guy had a great arm. Uh, I mean, he was a really good player. The peak is 91, so the game thinks he's going to become something eventually. But it's got to be quick, right? I mean, in theory, because here he is on a Milwaukee Brewer, technically a Seattle pilot, and um, and uh, this is 1972 card. So in two years, he's in the majors, and he's not ready for that yet in the game. Then we got Jerry Mumphrey, pretty solid uh 
I mean, he was not a fourth outfielder. He got regular at bats for the Cards and the Padres, but um, you know, I think of him as a fourth outfielder. Got great speed. Can play anywhere in the outfield. He's got some growing to do. He's already got a good arm and great range. I mean, we could definitely use that guy. Henry Cruz, he's cool. He's gonna he's gonna look cool on the bench. Uh, play center field. I, I mean, the game thinks he's a first baseman. So this is somebody that I actually got. You know, I probably changed whatever position they thought he was in this game. Um, but he played center field in the majors. So he's got some work to do to get that defensive rating up. Terry Forster, pretty good reliever. Maybe it was a one-time closer, if I recall. In that 1972 Topps baseball card, pretty sweet. This is my number one draft pick baseball card from the 70s. Love these cards. Tripping balls. Love the, love the design. 1975 is my number two pick. Um, there's Roy Smalley, Jr. Uh, he's a shortstop. Pretty good. We like that guy. Pretty solid player. Could hit home runs, too. Bombo Rivera. We like Bombo. We love, we love his name. I don't think this is a guy that's... This is a fourth outfielder at best. I mean, are we already getting to the schlubby schlubs? Pete Vukovic, he won a Cy Young. Um pretty young here and he didn't even get to the majors until he was on the expansion Blue Jays that's crazy when you think about it as he's 17 years old in 1970 but he could you know so it's gonna take a while for some of these guys in theory to get major league ready and it's almost like a cheat code for me if I look at the baseball card and I know that he didn't make it to the majors until 1976 or 77 77 in this case um, you know, if I already know that, then, like, why would I draft him? You know, he won't be valuable till somewhere down the road. Eric Rasmussen, one of the ugliest men on the planet. Uh, his 1970, uh, yeah, the next card, the next the next uh, year after this season, that card used to scare me as a child whenever I opened up a pack of cards, saw his face. Uh, my condolences to the uh, Rasmussen family for having to look at that. Uh, Larry McCall. Now, we know Larry McCall in the 1985 Tigers series that we're getting ready to play. Larry McCall has had a great career with the Indians, um, giving up the most home runs. He gives up home runs like Danny McLean gives up home runs in this series. Um, I don't know if, because we're um, including him in an actual draft, he might have a whole different career path than what he's had in the uh, Tigers uh, series. But uh, that'll be fun to see. Uh, but because of that, in my mind, I would never draft him. Al Holland, left-handed closer. I don't like those guys, but he was a good one. Had a good long career. Not ready for prime time, but he could be a good potential player. Wayne Gross, solid third baseman for the A's. Dennis Wirth, who's found a lot of um, PT in, in our other sim for the Yankees. I think he plays first. Also was a catcher. But he played first base more than he caught in the majors. Um, and so, you know, I think the game probably had him as a catcher, but I changed him to first. Jim Morrison, lead singer of the Doors, and also a third baseman, potentially. Craig Ryan, I mean, now we're getting into Schlubby Schlubbersons. Joe Wallace. Pepe Manguel. Steve Henderson, a great outfielder in his time. Played for Freddy's New York Mets. There's Jerry Harrison Sr. Uh, Kerry Deneen, failed Yankees draft pick. Rick Williams, loving those old Astros uniforms. Those were sweet. It was a relief pitcher. Joe Sambito also got the Astros um, old uni unis there. Left-handed relief pitcher. He was good in his time. I love Lamp. Dennis Lamp. Doug Corbett. Fernando Arroyo. Drafted by my Tigers. Um, Morris Nettles. Don't know him. Steve Bowling. He's in the wrong hobby. 
Ray Knight. We all know Ray Knight. Listed as a third baseman. Uh, Bill Travers. Will McEnany. Warren Brewster. I mean, you, you get the picture here. Bump Wills. We're going to go through these pretty quickly. Uh, Omar Moreno. Pete Lacock. Art Gardner. Dave Frost. Charles Smith. I mean, this guy doesn't even have a card. So this guy was a career minor leaguer. I don't know where he was drafted in real life, but um, this is a guy. I, this is one thing I do like that the game does is um, if they're a prominent minor league player from this era, um, the creator of this game has added them, and I think that's pretty cool. There's Charles Nelson Riley, Leon Lee, Ernie Witt, Detroit native. We like him. Jerry Tab, put it on my tab. Steve Stroder, he is a DH. He'll be drafted as a DH. So whomever drafts him won't even be able to use him technically until 1973, right? John Scott, Jerry Royster, <coughs> pardon me, Rowland Office, Mike Ivey, there you go. Big, big time draft pick during this era. Just never panned out. Dan Ford got the Topps Gold Cup card from 76. Rich Dower, 77 Tops. Sam Bowen, longtime minor leaguer for the Red Sox. Tommy Bianco, potentially could have been a Seattle pilot. John Poff, another potential Seattle pilot. Uh, Dan Worthen. Longtime pitching coach, John Verhoeven, Mike Stanton. Look how young Mike Stanton is in his Astros uni. Greg Gross, good pinch hitter. Bob Golasso, John Canera, Al Autry, Jerry Augustine. I love the uh, airbrushed <laughs> 77 cards. Those are great. Uh, Jim Riggleman. Oh, manager of the Cubbies. I was once, I was on a train one time, and some people uh, stopped me and asked me if I was Jim Riggleman. True story. I guess I kind of look a little bit like him with uh, back when I had hair. Uh, Denny Haynes. We got Jim Wilhelm. Kaiser Wilhelm. We got Jerry White. Reggie Walton. Rick Sweet. Dude. Dan Meyer, a, a really great Detroit Tiger. This is the guy that held down first base for us until uh, Jason Thompson came along. Uh, I always like Danny Meyer. Of course, he was drafted by the um, Mariners uh, in the expansion draft. There's Gary Gray, a very confusing-looking name when I was a kid. Why is his name Gary Gary? That's what I always said, but I was a, I was a dumb kid. Uh, Rod Gilbreth, Gil Flores, Gil Flowers. Dave Collins always looked tough with those glasses. That's tough to do. He's speedy, though. Speed's 96. I believe he did lead the American League in stolen bases once, or maybe it was with the Reds. I can't remember. Rob Andrews. Merle Smith, another guy that does not have a baseball card. Art James. I believe he played for the Tigers. Yeah, that's the Rochester. Or I don't know. I know he played for the Tigers. Pat Zachary, underrated pitcher from that era. Finding him pretty far down the list. Nate Snell. This is a 1985 Topps card. Nate Snell didn't make it to the majors until 1984. That's 14 years later he was a rookie. That's cuckoo. Eduardo Rodriguez. Mickey, Mal Mickey Mahler. His, he had a brother that played as well. Rick Langford. You could get Rick Langford in this draft for a late draft pick. Fred Holdsworth of the Tigers. Bill Castro. We got Eddie Bain. Bud Bowling. His real name is Terry. Uh, we got Pat Scanlon. Chip Lang. Dave Downs. Tim Doerr. Is that Bobby Doerr's son, I wonder? 
Yeah, we'll find that out. Mike Cash, Keith Bridges, camera shy. There's Jerry Remy way down the list. Pretty solid second baseman. I think he passed away last year. R.I.P. Jerry Remy. Gold Cup card. So we had a good year for the uh, Angels as a rookie. There's Greg Malberg. Mike Edwards. Orlando Alvarez. Del Alston. Bob Alieta. Mark Bodaska. Dan Briggs. Earl Bass. Dave Wormeister. He just passed away a couple days ago. R.I.P. Dave Wormeister. Rick Waits. Randy Tate. Craig Reynolds. Craig Reynolds. He was traded. Oh, man. We just talked about him. He was traded for like a Hall of Famer one time. Like one of the worst trades in baseball. I forgot who. Lance Rothson, a, a Dodgers pitcher that was uh, projected to be a stud. He just didn't work out. There's Bob McClure, longtime reliever. Dave Cheadle, mm, not related to Don Cheadle. Tom Carroll, Sal Butera Sr., son plays ball. I think he's already retired, actually. Thad Philyaw, interesting. I'd like to know his story. Tony Pepper, no pepper around the infield. Mark Hill, catcher. Bob Gorinsky. Julio Gonzalez. Tim Blackwell. Bob Adams, first baseman for my Tigers. I barely remember that guy. Did not work out. Burke Suter, Sutter. Randy Firebaugh. Cool name, just Mike Squires. Longtime first baseman for the Sox. Whenever I think about their dumb um, shorts experiment, I always think of Mike Squires. I think he's the guy that was, I don't know, the uh, guy that modeled it or something. There's Dale Solderholm. Uh, Raymond Price. We don't have a photo of that guy. Dale Rovett. Elena Quinn. Ryan Kurosaki. One of the uh, early uh, Japanese players to come over. Mike Davey. Tom Brennan. We're almost to the end here, guys. Nobody, 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 nobody. No. Oh, whoops, sorry. Oh, there's somebody. Mike Gatlin. Nobody. Barry Foote. Tom Donahue. Bob Davis. I mean, these are like the catchers that barely make the team. Billy Allman, light hitting, great glove, short stop. Steve Smith, Lamar Jones, Greg Terlicky, Randy Scarberry, Butch Metzger. Man, Butch Metzger, he was like a first-round draft pick, I believe. Don Collins, Doug Capilla, Cardell Camper, that's a great name. Gary Bear, I'm loving the, uh, it looks like a University of Michigan hat. Porphy Altamirano played a couple years for the Phils. Nobody's Fred Andrews. Steve Hamrick. With a lot of these, no, you know, these schlubs, um, you know, the only cards available are minor league cards. And if they, if I couldn't uh, find one on uh, the Beckett website, then I would search the, um, you know, the internet looking for something to use, an Im some image to use. So some of these might not even be cards. They just might be photos from the yearbook or something, you know? But I wanted to have something to represent everybody, if I could. Dwayne Espy, Steve Klein is a... <laughs> I mean, here's Steve Klein as a starting pitcher, but here he is as a coach. So, I mean, this guy probably never made it to the majors uh, as a pitcher, but that's what he looks like. Stan Bakowitz. Steve Waterbury, autograph, somehow. Ed Plank, Bob Myrick for the Mets. Don DeMola, Terry Cornut, Larry Anderson. We've seen a lot of him in the, uh, 80, the 80s Tiger series that we're doing. Santo Alcala, rookie card. John Launcher, 
Glenn Burke, we all know about Glenn Burke. Ramon Aviles. Lamar Wright. Sam Mejia. Dwight Bernard, he's so far down the list, but this guy is such a major player in our Tiger series. Robert Taylor, don't know about him. Alfredo Ortiz. Stanley Mann. Stan the Man, that's what he is. John Hughes, the wait, John Hughes, the writer of uh, Breakfast Club. Kip Coughlin, Wayne Bowers. Marshall Edwards. Ron Washington. Currently the manager of the Angels, right? Monroe Greenfield. Angel Torres. John Sutton. Jose Sosa. Jeff Schneider. Bobby Cuellar. I mean, these are all names that we've seen. Mike Bassick. Um, yeah, these are all names that we've seen in the uh, other series that we're doing. Carl Person. Don Hopkins. Bruce Bosler, Chuck Baker, Todd Brenzier. Jeez, there's so many people, right? Neil Rasmussen, Ron Norman. These are just schlubby schlubbersons. Oh, and then we're back to Fred Lynn. Okay. So, um, you know, like if we just were to count down 20, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there's your first 20. Potentially, Jim Morrison might be there for us. If you look at the players below, assuming that there might not be any of these guys that we would want if they were there, I mean, who do we go with? Do I go with Omar Marino? Do we go with Bump Wills? Steve Henderson would be a good choice. I mean, um, what's this pow power 72 at the moment? Ray Knight, I mean, I can't say I'd build a team around. I can't draft Pete LeCock. I can't say that name every single at bat. I mean, I'm already immature as it is with that stuff. That's just too much work. I mean, there really isn't a lot of people. I mean, we could probably get a Rick Langford in the second round, you know. So I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm hoping one of these guys drops down, maybe Joaquin Andahar. Maybe Mike Krukow. I mean, we certainly need pitching. Um, you know, more than anything right now. So those are the options. Let me know in the comments below uh, who you would draft if you, you know, if they fell to us and who you think we probably would get. You know, I mean, anybody would be better than what we have right now. So even if we had to draft Wayne Gross, I mean, he's a better third baseman than Rich Rollins. Right? Or Aurelio Lo uh, Rodriguez. Um, so, I don't know. Anyway, there you have it, folks. I think we spent enough time on this. We're going to turn the page to June. We've got two more games versus the Yankees. And then we have four versus the Orioles. Uh, the first place Orioles on this homestand before we head on the road to Chicago. Play the White Sox and then on the ninth. And I believe this happens before the ball game. Or maybe it happens after the 8th. I don't know. But on one of these two games, um, the draft will take place. And when that happens, um, you know, we'll, we'll see who we get. Then we got the next day off, our, our first day off in a while. Okay, guys, that'll do it. Thank you so much for watching. Like and or subscribe to the channel. And we will catch you tomorrow with Game 3 of the Yankees series. Until then, everyone, have a great day.